It's a new morning in America. The old cynicism is gone. We have faith in our people. We're optimistic. It really boils down to our ability to Do you like what you see? I will be running in 2024, and I'll need lots of support and funding. FYI, small amounts add up, and I can take donations through the website. The website is peterboykin.com. That's P-E-T-E-R-B-O-Y-K-I-N.com, and it's updated. I plan to run a clean campaign, as we will have a lot of candidates running, and I just hope that money doesn't continue to decide who runs things in Raleigh or D.C. Our government should be ran by the people, and mainly by those like myself who can understand the everyday struggles of its citizens. Win or lose, I cannot just sit on the sidelines and comment. Running is activism. So if you have or you like the content that I've put out in the past, please help me towards the future. Let's hashtag go right with Peter Boykin. Hi fellow patriots, this is Peter Boykin from hashtag go right share this right now. Time to go right. Hi folks, this is Peter Boykin and thank you for tuning in to Hashtag Go Right. We have a lot of articles to talk about today and some viral videos thrown in the mix. Ethics Watchdog says AOC likely violated house rules. Your gun purchases are now tracked when you use a Discover card. The Air Force released Republicans' data to a Democrat relinquished group. Bait and switch at Joe Biden's open borders. China proposes Russia peace plan as Zelensky snubs $100 billion in U.S. aid. We got a lot and more. It's time to go right. We'll be right back with this story from Go Right News. You can follow us on GoRightNews.com for more information. Thank you. Now... As also as a fellow New Yorker, I think one of the things that we should talk about here is also one of the disgusting legacies after 9-11 has been the targeting and racism against Muslim Americans throughout the United States of America. And this is an extension of that legacy. Consistency, there is nothing consistent with the Republican Party's continued attack except for the racism and incitement of violence against women of color in this body. I had a member of the Republican caucus threaten my life and you all and the Republican Republican caucus rewarded him with one of the most prestigious committee assignments in this Congress. Don't tell me this is about consistency. Don't tell me that this is about an advocate, a, a condemnation of anti-Semitic remarks when you have a member of the Republican caucus who has, who has talked about Jewish space lasers and, and an entire amount of trust and also elevated her to some of the highest committee assignments in this body. This is about targeting women of color in the, in the United States. America. Don't tell me because I didn't get a single a time of inspiration. Representative Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, AOC, is under investigation by the House Ethics Committee. Here's what we know The Ethics Committee released a statement saying they are going to, quote, extend the matter regarding Representative AOC, which was transmitted to the committee by the Office of Congressional Ethics 
on June 23, 2022. Quote, extend the matter is the congressional equivalent of an indictment. What did she do to get herself in trouble? It could be connected to her attendance at the Met Gala in 2021, where she accepted free tickets worth over $30,000 and a free tax the rich dress, both of which are against house rules. House members are allowed to accept free tickets to charitable events, but the Met Gala tickets are controlled by the for-profit company Condé Nast. Tables at the event are controlled by other for-profit companies. So if AOC's table was gifted by a company like Facebook or Google, you can see how there would be a conflict of interest. Now what? The House will announce what actions it plans to take in 2023 when Republicans have control. Thank you for tuning in to Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin, and you can learn more at GoRightNews.com. Peace. Ethics Watchdog says AOC likely violated house rule. An independent house ethics panel says Representative AOC may have violated, quote, standards of conduct and federal law when she received a or accepted a free dress and free tickets to attend the 2021 Met Gala. I know a long time ago I talked about this before. In September 2021, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wore a dress with the words, quote, tax the rich embroidered on it. Note, Joy Villa, a Trump supporter, which I don't think was at the Grammys last time, and she was a friend, and I have not been able to hear from her in a while. So if anybody knows where Joy Villa is, where is Joy Villa? But Joy Villa wore a similar dresses with right-wing messages, so AOC isn't even original. Uh, So AOC was gifted this dress for her for free, and the congresswoman also accepted free tickets valued at $30,000. Both gifts violate House ethics rules. The details, the Office of Congressional Ethics, OCE, released a statement on the potential violation. Representative AOC may have accepted impermissible gifts associated with her attendance at the Met Gala in 2021. If Representative AOC accepted impermissible gifts, then she may have violated House rules, standards of conduct, and federal law. What AOC says, her attorney releasing a statement saying, while regrettable, this matter definitely does not rise to the level of a violation of House rules or of federal law. Now, why does this matter? Politicians are corrupt by nature, in my opinion, but there are some guardrails in place to prevent their corruption. House ethics rules prohibit members of Congress from accepting gifts of gratuity, favor, discount, entertainment, hospitality, loan, forbearance, or other items having monetary value. Federal law says no member can solicit or accept anything of a value from a person seeking official action from doing business with, or whose interests may be substantially affected by the performance or non-performance of an individual's official duties. The point is, we don't want politicians accepting gifts because it can corrupt their decision-making. Too late. The source of this is Daily Caller and Axos, and there's links to this article on GoRightNews.com.
Let the stars and stripes wave They wear for liberty Our nation under God Our freedoms and integrity Try to take our lives We still will fight for freedom We will champion the world Our nation fights for the freedoms Of every man Your gun purchases are now tracked when you use a Discover credit card. From the Lone Star to the Garden State, the Midwest across to the Golden Gate, Mark Spitz and the homie Kosha Dill still flex it. Where we just supposed to chill? Discover credit card will begin tracking gun purchases made by its card holders beginning in April 2023. The first card issued to do so in the U.S. Now I'm going to give an update. Since then, they have pulled back this and decided that they're not going to do it for now. But I still want to go over what the importance of this was. In 2022, Democratic lawmakers in New York pushed the major credit card companies to create a new category code to flag gun purchases. Discover has more than 55 million card holders who will soon have their gun store purchases tracked if they continue to push this law back in. The company claims its efforts are to help authorities with gun-related crimes. Discover issued a statement saying, quote, we remain focused on continuing to protect and support lawful purchases on our network while protecting the privacy of cardholders. Gun rights advocates say this move will bring unwarranted scrutiny on the overwhelming majority of gun owners who are law abiding. It's worth pointing out that this new category code will track your total purchase at the gun store. So if you buy a $200 pistol and a $500 gun safe, you'll be flagged and tracked for a $700 purchase. Discover isn't alone. It's just the first. Last year in 2022, Visa, American Express, and MasterCard also caved in Democrat pressure campaigns and announced they would track gun and ammo purchases. It just hasn't been implemented yet. Which they, of course, the update says they are not implementing it yet and they're all putting it back. But I would suggest that you use cash. Cash is king, baby. Source of this is Breitbart and Fox News, and there's links to this and this article on GoRightNews.com. That's why I took the most aggressive action ever in all of history in any country to take on the climate crisis by lowering your home energy bills. Joe Biden says a lot of stupid things and it happens so often that we tend to ignore a lot of it. But this statement he made can't be ignored. Quote, I took the most aggressive action ever in all of history and in any country to take 
on the climate crisis by lowering your home energy bills. Huh? Now, I pulled up the Bureau of Labor Statistics report for January 2023. February hadn't come out yet when I did this. But here's what Joe Biden did to your energy bills. Electricity is up 11.9% compared to last year. Utility gas is up 26.7% compared to last year. Great, great job, Joe. I mean, great job. Really? The Air Force released Republicans' data to a Democrat-linked group. The U.S. Air Force improperly released the personal information of 11 service members. Five are confirmed to be Republican records to a Democrat-linked opposition research firm. This all began back in October 2022 when Republican House candidate Jennifer Ruth Green had her personal Air Force records leaked to the press, which revealed she had been sexually assaulted by an Iraqi serviceman. This forced the Air Force to launch an internal investigation into how her records were leaked. The investigation found that Ruth Green was just one of 11 airmen whose private information was improperly released. According to the Air Force, quote, virtually all of the records were given to a man named Abraham Payton, who worked for a company called Due Diligence, LLC. According to Federal Election Commission records, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, DCCC, was paying due diligence between January 2021 and December of 2022. The DCCC is the fundraising arm for House Democrats. If you're wondering why the Air Force would release personnel information, they claim that Peyton, quote, represented himself as a background investigator seeking service records for employment purposes. Now, who had their information released? As of right now, only five identities are public, and they're all Republicans. Representative Don Bacon, Representative Zach Nunn, Jennifer Ruth Green, and former House candidates Kevin Delicate and Sam Peters. Now what happens next? Hopefully accountability. We need to find out if the DCCC used the information to target these Republicans in any way. National Republican Congress Congressional Committee Chairman Representative Richard Hudson, he's from North Carolina, said, quote, this systemic weaponization of Republican candidates' military service against them is beyond disgusting. It is time for the DCCC to stop hiding and face accountability for their actions. Source of this is the Daily Mail, Fox News, and Breitbart. There's links to those stories on this article on GoRightNews.com. I was running for office at the time, but you all may remember it, that the, I had a big fight with uh, the former president uh, and maybe future president. Bless me, Father. Anyway, no.
Let's go fishing, let's make a day I got the pole, you got the bay It's so pretty, I'd sure hate to waste this time We'll find us a shady little spot, not too cool Bait and switch at Joe Biden's open borders the Biden regime and its allies in the corporate media took a victory lap after the January immigration figures showed a decrease in illegal immigration. Or maybe they're just not catching them. In a, but a closer look exposes the bait and switch game Biden is playing to bring more in through the back door. On January 5, 2023, the Biden regime began a program to allow migrants from Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, and Haiti, we'll call them VCNH, to apply for asylum from their home countries through an app and then be brought into the U.S., quote, legally. After one month within, with this policy in effect, here's what the numbers look like. The headline numbers. In January, 150,000 illegal aliens were encountered at the southern border a 37.9% drop from the previous month of 251,487. Now, digging into the VCNH numbers, the number of illegals coming from VCNH countries decreased from 91,300 in December to 22,082 in January, a drop of 69,248. Now, what does that tell you? There weren't, well, there aren't fewer illegals coming into this country. They're just coming legally through Biden's new Salem program. Where's the jobs, right? Now, does Biden have the authority to do this? Sort of. In 1952, Congress gave the president exclusive power to grant, quote, humanitarian parole for asylum, where his legal authority gets shaky is that asylum was never meant for economic memory, mem, um, I'm sorry, economic migrants. It was meant for people fleeing war, famine, and other disasters. But many VCNH migrants are skipping over other countries on their way to the U.S., which suggests they're not necessarily trying to escape their country. They specifically want to get to the U.S. Biden does not care about reducing illegal immigration. He just cares about the optics and political backlash to having illegals flooding across the border. That, they should have built a wall. That's what this new policy is about. It's all about it. Getting those illegals into the country in a much, listen to me, quieter, quieter way. The source is Cato and Axos. The links to these articles are on this article on GoRightNews.com. I had lost hope for the American people. I felt that the American people were the most brainwashed on the face of the earth. And lo and behold, Something just happened that it was as plain as daylight that the media in the United States, the establishment in the United States, television, radio, newspapers, government agencies, were all demonizing one candidate, doing every single thing they could possibly do to make him look bad so that public opinion would turn against him. And the other candidate, who I consider to be the candidate of war, because the those who control power in the United States, in Britain, in France, in Germany, in NATO, are, in my opinion, lusting for war with Russia and China, because Russia and China are not prepared to bend their knees in submission. And these people have an arrogance unprecedented in history that they want to rule the whole world. Everybody must bend 
bend down, bow down and submit to them. But Russia says, no, the Russian knee will not bend to you. And China says, no, the knee of China will not bend to you. And the other candidate was the one who was in harmony with this and supporting war on Russia, war on China, which would have been nuclear war. You don't need a PhD to know that. The world has never experienced nuclear war. No. The results of the elections in the United States indicate that a large number of people in the United States are still capable of... China proposes Russian peace plan as Zelensky snubs 100 billion in U.S. aid. Zelensky snubs 100 billion in U.S. aid, wants to meet with China. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says, you know, he would like to meet with the Chinese President Xi Jinping after China put forward a 12 point peace plan between Ukraine and Russia. Probably because Donald Trump's not there to broker it, right? The United States has given Ukraine roughly $100 billion in weapons and aid since the war began. Now Zelensky wants to play footsie with China, the United States' number one geopolitical enemy. Not a good look. Speaking to reporters in Kiev, Zelensky said, I believe that the fact that China started talking about Ukraine is not bad, but the question is what follows the words, the question in the steps and where they will lead to. China's 12-point plan. China released its intentionally vague plan on the one-year anniversary of the war, stating that there are no winners in conflict wars, and warning that all parties should maintain rationality and restraint. Wow, if only the left and the right in our Congress would do that. Now, the plan calls for, courtesy of the Daily Wire, respecting the sovereignty of all countries. It does not specifically uh, specify who has sovereignty over the disputed regions. Abandoning the Cold War mentality. Ceasing hostilities. Resuming peace talks. Resolving the humanitarian crisis. Protecting civilians and prisoners of war. Keeping nuclear power plants safe. Reducing strategic risks, facilitating grain exports, stopping unilateral sanctions, keeping industrial and supply chain stable, and promoting post-conflict reconstruction. China claims to be a natural party, or a neutral party, but it's important to remember that it released this plan two days after Xi's senior foreign policy advisor met with Putin in Moscow. The West's reaction to China's plan has been understandably unimpressed. Joe Biden said that if Putin was, quote, applauding it, how could it be any good? Now, NATO's Secretary General Jen Stolenberg said the plan didn't have, quote, much credibility. Now, here's the real talk. The war in Ukraine needs to end, and we want to see peace negotiated. But China's plan is a joke, not a peace agreement. The fact that Zelensky is entertaining Z is a slap in the face to the United States and the Western nation it so badly wants to ally with and loves taking our money, right? The source of this is AP, Euro News, NBC News, and The Daily Wire. There's links to those articles on this article on GoRightNews.com.
the Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the United States of America. It superseded the Articles of Confederation, the nation's first constitution, in 1789. Originally comprising seven articles, it delineates the national frame and constraints of our government. Without the Constitution, America could not exist. Without the Constitution, Americans would be fated to live with others throughout human history at the whims of threatening tyrants and under their dark power of coercion. That's where the enemies of the Constitution mean to drive us today, into the darkness, fighting for our freedoms, prosperity, and the survival of our constitutional republic is our best defense. Thanks for listening to Go Right with Peter Boykin. Please like this post and please subscribe and follow and share this podcast to all your social media accounts and visit GoRightNews.com for more Go Right News with Peter Boykin. If you like what you hear, help support the podcast by donating. The link to donate is on GoRightNews.com. Thank you for your support. Check out this news story and more on GoRightNews.com and the podcast hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin. Go Right and register to vote. Your vote matters, so vote. Go right and vote. Hashtag go right. Go right. Do right. Be right. Go right. Do right. Be right. Lead right. Think right. Vote right. Vote right. Think right. Lead right. Hashtag go right. It's time to join the Go Right movement. It is time to hashtag go right for America. Join us at go right.us and go right news.com. It is time for the Great American Revival, and it is time to hashtag Go Right for America. Thanks again, everybody, for listening to this, and please share it everywhere. Again, this has been hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin, a part of GoRightNews.com. <laughs>